everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with another Vectorworks video. Now today we're going to look at modelling really complex facades using the amazing surface array tool that Vectorworks offers. And you can see this is quite a complex structure that I've created here. It's just a bit of fun, just to mess around really. But I'm really kind of keen just to show you how we can model this up quite dynamically and also with some parametric control. So I do hope you enjoy the video and thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you would like to join the channel. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is change the view to the front view here. And you can see I've got the grid on because this helps a little bit when we're working in 3D identify where the um, origin is. Um, so I'm going to essentially just tab across and type in a distance here. And let's kind of just start drawing here. Actually, I think we'll go a little bit more. I'm just going to draw a circle. And this is the beginnings of our project. So let's put this in at, um, I think it was five meters. What I'm now going to do is just move that across a bit more. Okay, so in order to create the sort of um, outer shell of the donut, as it were, for this particular project, what we're going to do is drop in a 2D locus at the center of the origin of the drawing, select the circle, and then go to Model Sweep Menu. Now you can just click OK um, if you want to change the segment angle a bit. And you can see when you sweep that circle around the origin, this is what you get. You get essentially a donut. Um, so the next thing that I can do if I want to is go up to basically my clip tool and just rub out the bottom half. So there we go, half a donut. Excellent. So very easy to make sort of curvy sweep type shapes in Vectorworks. And this is going to evolve into something a bit more sophisticated. Now we can turn the grid off now at this stage. We don't really need that anymore. And what we're going to do now is just get our rectangle tool and basically just put um, a rectangle here. I think we'll type in, let's go for about sort of five, four meters or something. Let's do five meters. And I'm going to extrude this um, so that we can actually use this to chop a bit of a section out of the sort of shell, if you like. Let's bring this up by, say, two meters. Maybe we'll actually go a bit more. Let's do three meters and just adapt it there. Very easy to adapt afterwards. Okay, great. We'll go to model and we're going to do subtract. So when we click subtract solid, you can see here is the resulting shape. Vectorworks is extremely good for solid modeling. And that's the beauty that we can double click into the history of the object, as it were. Copy that shape. So I'm just going to do a copy, do a paste in place. Then I'm just going to use the rotate tool. A nice little shortcut on my workspace. Double click R. Let's type in 90 degrees. And then all I need to do is exit the solid subtraction so that we can actually just um, increase those two subtractions with one command. So I really love the design history of history-based modeling that Vectorwitz features. So none of this is particularly new. We've just done the sweep and we've done the extrudes and we've done the subtractions. What we'll do though, we'll just put this into a class and that'll be useful so that we can uh, turn it off later. Now we're gonna go ahead and use the extract tool. So you've seen my other videos or if you have, uh, you'll notice that I'm a big fan of the extracting tool. Now what I'm going to do is basically just select um, the base object. Let's put that into another class. That's in that class there. There we go. So we've turned off the base and all we've got left with is the shell. Now this is where it starts to get really interesting. So we're going to go and create a profile, should we say, that we can actually uh, duplicate along the surface of this shell. So what I did was double click for, for the rectangle tool and brought up a dialogue. I've just made a one meter by one meter little window, if you like, and we're just clipping surface to create some glass in here. Let's go to white mode. I do find when I'm modeling, actually, the, the sort of normal uh, screen mode is probably the better one for modeling, um, but I do like the dark mode for certain times as well. So I'm just gonna put that into a class called glass, and we'll click OK, use attributes, and basically go and assign a texture from our resource browser and load in the required texture. Now Vectorworks comes with hundreds of textures and if you see my website I make some really nice texture packs you can buy some additional ones as well. So do check that out. Okay good so let's have a quick look in 3D. Uh, we've got the glass there. Let's just extrude up this bit of frame so model extrude. Uh, let's bring this up by say 50 mil. What we'll do is we'll just put this into a class as well, just so we've got that textured up. 
but this time we'll just assign just a color basically just a normal kind of gray material type color no textures or anything excellent okay so this is going to be our profile so let's select both of those shapes and basically what we can then do is select the surface and go to model and the wonderful command create surface array now think of the surface array as like a 3d array command but what it's going to do is array our object over the surface now it's a really complicated shape that surface um, and you can see already something exciting is happening now what we need to do is just turn off the display of the base surface for a moment um, so there's the base surface gone and wow look at that how amazing is that so basically that simple profile of the window gets duplicated around the array and the really nice thing because it's parametric we can just tap in different numbers so it's increased the number to I don't know 48 or something so one of the amazing things about the surface array tool is the fact that you can just keep parametrically changing the parameters and the options after um, so what we'll do we'll just go ahead and save this uh, so that we've got this progress so far uh, excellent and let's carry on with the next little bit of the modeling so I think what we'll do we'll get the circle tool and we'll click and we'll just put a kind of floor in if you like a base so I'm just going to go model extrude and just give that model something to sit on uh, let's extrude minor so it goes negative away from me that means it goes down from zero um, essentially making a floor level and we'll just pop a nice little texture I'm working on a new texture pack at the moment I'm really excited about uh, so keep an eye on the website soon and um, that'll be coming out very soon brilliant okay so what we'll do is we'll also just pop a heliodon in at this stage um, and the heliodon's excellent because that will just basically turn on some shadows just make sure that you've got OpenGL options enabled with medium or high quality shadows bear in mind high quality shadows will slow it down a little bit um, so not ideal for modeling but certainly great for actually kind of visualizing the complexity of that structure so you can see when I spin it around with it highlighted it really is quite a dynamic structure and you know it was modeled really with a few quite simple commands okay so let's carry on and move a bit forward I'm going to use the 3d hemisphere tool and um, basically I'm just going to kind of draw that into the model and snap it to that rail there and I'm just going to put it into the front view click our selection tool and just kind of raise that up ever so slightly so it sits like a dome on top of our weird and wonderful structure okay uh, let's just bring that in ever so slightly I think it was just a tiny bit too big so that's great it's easy to edit afterwards just to that line there fantastic okay so once again um, we're going to go to the extracting tool we're going to extract the surface um, this time I don't need to keep the base surface so I'm just going to kind of click and cut uh, delete the underlying hemisphere if you like and then we'll just paste in place the NURBS extracted surface that we've created okay cool so let's do something a little bit different I'm going to double click onto the um, surface array that means I can actually access the array item and copy it so I'm just going to go ahead and exit the array item so that the uh, original shape just gets rearrayed around our surface array could have modified it if I'd wanted to but you'll kind of get the idea with this next bit anyway so I'm just going to paste in place now we'll go and select the uh, dome if you like surface and we'll do the same thing again so let's go for it let's go for um, model surface array let's just put some numbers in here so horizontal repositions go for 10 uh, and the other direction will do 36 so what this will do is essentially array the item around the dome so we're getting a nice sort of dome form and once again we'll basically turn off the base surface we could have kept the base surface and colored it maybe given it a material but I quite like to just turn it off and just have a little reveal of what the structure is doing so look at that you know just in a few clicks we've created something pretty amazing sort of structurally um, and actually looks really quite buildable but the real beauty of this array is we can simply double click edit the array item what I'm going to do here is basically double click my rotate tool or R I'm going to rotate by 45 degrees and when I exit the array item um, we will get a completely different looking type of structure based on the new angle of that array item there so it's wonderfully editable and super parametric and look at that absolutely beautiful almost like a 
kind of spiral uh, pattern as it goes up. Um, really, really nice. Yeah, so not particularly any design in mind here. I'm just having a bit of fun, but it's really good to be creative sometimes and just, you know, design things just for fun. So we're just going to round off with um, a few of the sort of final images that I've created on this project. Um, you can see I've not done much more. I've added a spiral stair, little platform and just a few people. Uh, with the lights turned on it looks great with the shadows coming in there and um, you know really really fun so um, I can basically move around the model in real time just in OpenGL sort of shaded um, you know not the same as twin motion or anything but it gives you a really nice impression of the early design stage for visualization um, you'll notice also when I change view I've got a really nice little script which basically I've adapted uh, just to kind of change the timing using something called a view transition and that makes it nice and smooth. Anyway I really hope you've enjoyed this video again it's been fun to make and I really encourage you to play around with these tools sometimes it's about you know not the real project it's just about making stuff up and having a bit of fun. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye. <laughs>